Hi everyone, welcome to week four of your Pharmacy Career Planning 2 course. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at hospice pharmacy. And um, hospice is a, a kind of a different animal. Um, it takes a special person to be involved with hospice. Um, and so, um, you know, that's one of the things that you need to consider when you um, get involved in this type of pharmacy is um, not just the actual work itself, but um, the 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 folks with, that you're going to be working with, your patients. Um, as a, a daughter, I actually dealt with my mother going through hospice. I also <clears throat> dealt with my father-in-law going through hospice. So um, the relationship with between the the folks in the hospice hospice pharmacy is not only with the patient it is with the family as well so it's it's very important that that you are, are cut out for that type of work so in hospice pharmacy um, you know basically we're we're there to help those people who are terminally ill so we're not looking at curing these patients and that's sometimes a difficult thing for folks within hospice pharmacy to understand is you know, we're not there to make them better. We're just there to help them through this por portion, um, this end portion of their life. Um, you know, a lot of times those elder, those patients are elderly, but not always. Um, you know, they could be um, in a hospital, they could be in a nursing facility, but they could be at home as well. So all of those things are, are important to keep in mind when you're working with a hospice patient. Um, Typically, in order to qualify for hospice, the physician must certify that their death is expected within six months. So again, that's another difficult thing to, to know is that, you know, the patients that you're going to be working with won't be here um, after a certain period of time. So, um, you know, that's something that you have to keep in mind when you're working in this setting. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, the patient and their family are treated as a unit. So we're not just dealing with the patient, we're dealing with their entire family. Um, and so the care is more than just medication. Um, there's so much more involved in hospice than just making sure that they get their medications. However, um, there is, um, uh, somewhat of a moral dilemma for some folks who work in hospice because one of the things that a hospice may do depending on where you're located is that they may be providing um, end-of-life medications and what I mean by that is they may be providing doses of medications that in the way that they work will not only provide pain relief but will likely cause respiratory depression which in turn um, causes the patient to stop breathing and to pass away. Um, I actually had to make that call to uh, have my mother receive that treatment. She requested it ahead of time and told me when she wanted it. And um, as her daughter, I had to be the one who said, yes, it's time to go ahead and give her that medication. And um, it's, it's, so it's, you know, again, back to that whole thing, it, it requires a special type of person to be involved in this type of pharmacy. Um, you have to be able to, um, to do some tough things that you may not, you know, be able to have to do it in a regular pharmacy setting. Um, but just like with um, any other types of pharmacy settings, there are some traditional pieces. Um, obviously, you're going to have a pharmacist, a pharmacy technician, delivery services, support personnel, most of their inventory is limited to pain control and symptom relief, so things for like nausea and things like that. Um, so basically, again, you know, we're trying to make that patient comfortable. So a lot of pain management, symptom management. We are not trying to try to get that patient um, well. We are just trying to make them comfortable. So at different points in the process, you're going to be doing um, things like infusions and things like that, because obviously when you get to a certain point, Patients are likely not going to be able to take oral medications, so a lot of things are going to be IV or IM, things like that. Um, there is a common, what we call starter kit, that are that is for hospice patients. Um, and this is uh, just a list of some of those things that are going to be found in that hospice kit. Um, a lot of them for pain management. 
Um, you'll see a couple things on here, lorazepam, haloperidol. Those are both for um, anxiety and things like that. Um, when you get to the Cina and the Bisacodal, those are for things like, um, uh, th those are laxatives. Those are for, because a lot of these pain medications will cause constipation. So, you know, you want to make sure that we're keeping the patient comfortable um, in that realm as well. So um, those are just some of the many things that you're going to find um, in this chapter. Um, as you go through this week, if you find that you have any problems or questions, please make sure that you reach out to me and have a great week.